Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan and welcome to today's video, another book of the month reading vlog. If you are new to my channel, this is a series I do where I read my book of the month books as I get them. Revolutionary. No, I am not sponsored by book of the month. I wish I was. I am just a regular old paying member. I love the service. I love staying on top of new releases and giving reviews for books as they come out and letting you know if you should pick these books up through book of the month. If you're a member, you can add them onto future boxes, or if you're not a member of book of the month, you can seek these books out normally. And I've got three books on my docket to read this week. They're all actually pretty short, so I think I should be able to get through them relatively quickly. Let's talk about what they are. The first one I have is The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I have actually had this book since June of 2023. I had originally slated it for another themed reading vlog, which has not come to fruition yet, so I'm just going to knock it out in this book of the month reading vlog. I don't know a lot about this book other than I believe it has a slight fantasy element to it. I've heard it slight, so I do think I have a good chance of liking it because I've otherwise heard that it's very emotional. I think there's something about like adoption or foster care or something in here which I definitely think I'm going to enjoy. Other than that, I don't really know anything about the plot. I just know people have loved this book, so I'm excited to finally be giving it a shot. It's very short. It looks like it's less than 300 pages, so should be quick and easy. Then we've got the book that I picked in September and have not read yet. It's The Intern by Michelle Campbell. This is a mystery thriller. A young Harvard law student falls under the spell of a charismatic judge in this timely and thrilling novel about class, ambition, family, and murder. Sounds up my alley. I haven't really heard anybody talk about this book or give reviews on it, so my mind is open and I'm excited to get my thriller fix in with this one. I have liked legal thrillers in the past, so if there are any like courtroom scenes or anything in this book, I probably will enjoy those. But if it doesn't have those and is more like behind the scenes of a law student, I haven't really read that before, so that could also be interesting. I don't know, we'll see how this one goes. And then the third book that I have to read is my most recent pick from October, which is this month. And I'm really excited about this one. It's called The Leftover Woman by Jean Kwa. I believe this one is more of a like literary mystery book. So less thriller, more family drama. It says an evocative family drama in a riveting mystery about the ferocious pull of motherhood for two very different women. I do love books about motherhood. So hoping I love this one as well. This one is also very short also less than 300 pages. So excited to knock it out. I actually think I am going to get started with this book because I do have access to the audiobook through Libby and my library. So I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. Um, today is a Monday afternoon. I just finished up with work. I have a couple of chores to do around the house before I have to go pick up my kids from daycare. Otherwise just hanging out around the house. It is the week before Halloween. So trying to get affairs in order before that. And uh, yeah, I'll take you along with me and I'll let you know once I'm a little bit of a ways into this book and can give you an overall kind of synopsis and some of my initial thoughts. friends, the lighting in this clip is gonna be not great. It is very dark and gloomy outside. Winter is coming and this dining room, living room area of my house doesn't have great lighting on dark days. So we're making do with what we have. But I wanted to come on because I have an update on The Leftover Woman. I am about halfway through the book. So I thought I would give an overall synopsis. The book is very interesting so far. We're following two main perspectives. The first one is a woman named, I think Jasmine? Yeah, 
who has recently moved to New York City. She's immigrated from China. She thought she had a child that passed away during childbirth, but it turns out that child didn't die. They were put up for adoption by her husband and she has come looking for her child. So she's in New York City. She doesn't have any money or resources because she's fleeing her husband. So she ends up getting this pretty sketchy job. She's just trying to make it by until she can find her child. And then the other perspective is an American woman named Rebecca. Yes, I remembered both of their names. She and her husband are white and they have adopted a Chinese child. So we're getting like two sides of the same story. I'm not 100% sure if it's the same child, but I'm kind of operating under the assumption that they are and that's going to come to light. But it's just bringing up some really interesting conversations about adoption and kind of an impossible situation about where should this child be, but also the bigger conversation about motherhood, belonging, family, privilege, culture, and upbringing. A lot of really interesting topics. This so far is reminding me a lot of Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. I loved that book and there was a very similar side plot in that book that is basically the same as this story. It's an adoptive mother and a birth mother kind of fighting over the child. The birth mother in that one also being Asian and the adoptive family also being white. So very interesting and thought provoking. I'm interested to see where else this book goes because I'm not really sure what the climax is going to be. Um, I guess there's a little bit of that mystery of how these two perspectives intertwine. Again, I feel like I know where it's going, but there's always a chance I could be surprised. So I am going to go ahead and finish this book and I'll come back with my final thoughts. But I wanted to say that it's really intriguing me so far, the writing style has been great. I feel connected with both of these perspectives and like I'm seeing the good and bad of all of these characters because they're both mothers trying to do what's best for their child. And a lot of times other people have very conflicting feelings about how other people should parent their children. But when you're really in it, um, I don't know, you can justify a lot of different behaviors. Yeah, I don't really know where else I was going with that. So I'm gonna get back to reading this. I will be back hopefully later today with my final update and review. All right, friends, I just finished The Leftover Woman and I really enjoyed it. I am still thinking a little bit. I feel, I don't know, I'm maybe slightly conflicted because I can't decide if I was surprised by where this book went or if I, feel like I predicted everything that happened, but I still really enjoyed it despite that. I think it's the second one. I think I mentioned in the first clip that I think I knew everything that kind of was gonna happen, especially if I would have sat down and like written out predictions and really thought about it for a few minutes. I don't think a lot of what happened in here was surprising, but that doesn't mean it's not still impactful. And it really did impact me, especially when we got towards the very end of this book, just the decisions that were being made and what each person was saying to each other. It was really emotional and it almost kind of reinforces the idea that like privilege and prejudices, they are also at this point not unexpected. That doesn't mean they're not still impactful and they're almost still surprising when they do happen even though you know that's what was gonna happen the whole time. I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense, but it does kind of feel like how I felt after reading Little Fires Everywhere, where it was just like a calm sort of satisfaction with the book. This did have a climax and there was action towards the end of this book, which I did really enjoy reading, but more than that, it was like an emotional build and just really a punch at the end with what happened. It was really interesting, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend this to fans of Little Fires Everywhere and other family-centered books that have a lot to do with uh, like moral issues, social justice issues, specifically if you're interested in motherhood as a theme and adoptive motherhood, birth motherhood, cultural implications. So a lot of elements and factors that combined that I really enjoy. I think I'm gonna give it five stars. It's not really my most passionate five-star rating, but I know I don't have anything 
to critique about the book or anything that I would change about it or any point where I wasn't fully invested in the book. So because of that, it, it has to be five stars. It was really strong. But for some reason, I'm also not like jumping up and down screaming about it. I don't know. I'll have to see how this one lingers in my mind. I could see it growing stronger as a five star and into more of a favorite. Or I could see it kind of fading and just being something that, you know, was really impactful in the moment, but maybe doesn't last with me for a long time. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. But for now, it is five stars. I think it's a great story, worth telling, worth reading. I'm excited for other people to read this book and to start seeing other reviews and stuff about it. So that's great. I also wanted to update because during my uh, late lunch break today, I got about 50 pages into The Intern, so I can give you the initial synopsis of this book. So this is following a Harvard Law student who is applying to this internship under this lawyer that she really respects. It's a female law student applying to work under a female judge. So of course they have a strong connection. Um, the judge sees a lot of herself in this student, but also this student, her brother has been arrested and is going to court for selling drugs, which he says he didn't do. And he says everyone who's involved in the case is corrupt, including the judge of his case, who is actually the judge that this girl is trying to work under. So at the very beginning, she is struggling between whether or not she discloses that her brother is the guy in the trial that the judge is working on and if that is like a conflict of interest or whatever. Um, so she's trying to figure out whether or not to disclose that while she's applying for this job. I'm assuming she's going to get the internship. She's going to become the intern. And I'm guessing it's all going to just become very convoluted with her brother's case and working for the judge of the case. It's pretty interesting and juicy so far. I'm not sure how much of the actual case we're gonna get. I'm expecting kind of a lot. I do think this is going to be somewhat of a legal thriller. And this author, yeah, also went to Harvard and Stanford Law School worked at a law firm and spent eight years fighting crime as a federal prosecutor in New York City. So this book is clearly what this author knows, which I always enjoy. So I'm going to get back to this tonight when I have another chance to continue reading. But so far so good and hopefully I continue the trend of great books in this reading vlog. I will be back when I probably once I finish this book and can give you my overall review once it's done. friends back with some updates not sure exactly how long it's been since my last update at least a couple days it did take me a few days to get through the rest of the intern but I have finished and I enjoyed it I didn't love it it was kind of just okay what I did like about it I liked the legal aspect and that we're following an intern to a lawyer that's definitely a perspective I don't read a lot about it's a world I don't know a lot about and it was interesting following legal experts that aren't actively trying a case. I do enjoy thrillers where there is a courtroom element to it, but this didn't have anything inside the actual courtroom. It just followed lawyers who were in some messy business and it just kind of made it so that people you think you can trust, like the police and like lawyers in this situation are not as altruistic and good as you might assume. Not sure how accurate that is to real life, but it was interesting to read about. What didn't work so much for me was that this book got a little bit confusing because we are following the two main characters and we're following them in 
kind of different timelines. We get a lot of present day from both of them, but then the lawyer, who is the older woman, we also flash back in time to quite a few years ago to really back to her childhood and then a few points growing up to kind of show how she got to where she's at. And while it was interesting, it was just a little bit confusing to keep those timelines straight. And it reminded me a little bit of Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Jillian McAllister because of how much the mystery of this book really does go back to the past and like people in her family and her life that made decisions and got her involved in things that have just snowballed over the years and now she's in a situation that she can't get out of. That happened in Wrong Place, Wrong Time. Uh, different situation obviously and that book's very different in how it's told and the plot. But that element in both of these books just reminded me a lot of each other. But it's hard to keep characters straight when there are so many people in this lawyer's life who are important and you have to keep their names straight and a lot of them are important public figures. So you also kind of have to remember who they are in terms of their job. And uh, so yeah, I think the general mystery of this was well thought out. It just got really into the mud when you get into the details of how everything is intertwined. So it wasn't really fun to read. It was interesting. It was just kind of slow and trudging. With that, I guess I'm going to give it three stars. I'm glad I read it. It's different from most mystery thrillers that I have read. And if you are particularly interested in a thriller that has to do with legal people <laughs> and uh, maybe you really loved Wrong Place, Wrong Time, I would recommend this book as a similar mystery to that one. It's not told in a backwards timeline, but it does flashback at points to the past. So hopefully those parallels make sense. So not a new favorite thriller, but still glad I read it, gave it three stars. And my next update is a very exciting one because I have started The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. I started this last night when I was in bed. I thought I would read, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 pages and then go to bed. I was so sucked into this book, you guys. I am on page 185 and I read all 185 pages basically in one sitting. I am so invested in this book. It is so good. At this point, I'm not really sure why it's being categorized as fantasy. I obviously haven't finished it, so maybe fantasy elements will come into play, but so far this is all contemporary. It's set in the real world. It's about this main character who is a teacher, and you can tell she's a really good person. She had a rough childhood, and she grew up reading these children's books. There were like 60 of them in the same series. She loved them. I think the books were fantasy books, and she loved immersing herself in that world. She really idolized that author. She wrote letters to the author, and when she was a child, she actually ran away to where the author lived, and so she met the author and that's like her backstory. Now she's an adult. She's a teacher or a teacher's assistant, I guess. She doesn't have any kids, but she has a really, really strong connection with one of the kids that goes to her school who is an orphan and he's in the foster care system and she really wants to foster to adopt him. She just can't manage it financially. She doesn't have a good living situation, but that's like her end goal. And I guess the thing that's kind of like whimsical about this book, I don't think I would say it's fantasy, but it has a strong wishing element, hence the wishing game. But basically this teacher and this kid connect over reading this author's books and like wishing that one day she will be able to adopt him and be his mom. It's very, very sweet and emotional. And then where the plot of this book takes off, that's all the backstory. The plot of this book is that the author of that children's series had gone on hiatus. He stopped publishing books and now he's come back out and said that he has written one more book. There's only one copy of it in existence and he is running a contest to pick the person that he's gonna give it to. And that person can do whatever they want with that book. They can keep it for themselves. They can sell it to a publisher. It's extremely valuable and sought after. Um, and this main character gets the chance to compete for that book. So it's special for her. She's thinking this could be the thing that makes it so she can adopt this kid. And that's where I'm at in the book is she's in the middle of this competition. I'm loving it. This book has a bunch of riddles in it, which I just love. I love games and I love riddles and I love competitions. So those parts of this book are connecting so hard with me. Plus 
the emotional elements. I totally understand why so many people have loved this book. I'm sure I will love it through the end. It looks like I have less than 100 pages left, so I should fly through it once I finally get the chance to sit back down with it. I was hoping to have the audiobook by the time I was reading this book, but now I'm actually really glad that I don't. I had put it on hold in my library and it hasn't come in yet, but I'm so enjoying reading it physically, especially with those riddles. I'm liking that I can just stop and like reread the riddles and try to figure them out myself before continuing, which I know I wouldn't get myself to do if I was listening to the audio. And I think it's just overall really helping my reading experience. So loving it, can't wait to finish it. I expect that I will come back to you once I finish this book saying it's either four or five stars, saying the hype is correct, and highly, highly recommending it to everyone that that synopsis sounds good to. So that's what I'm gonna do. Unfortunately, I don't have time to sit down and read it right now. I do have to get back to my work day, but this afternoon, this evening, this will be my top priority, getting back to this one, finishing it. I can't wait. All right, my friends, I finished The Wishing Game. I finished it last night. I loved this book so much. I can't believe I waited so long to read it. This was a pick in June of this year. I'm so glad I finally read it because it was so good, which is not wholly unexpected because this book is getting great reviews. But what was making me hesitate was that so many people were calling it fantasy. And so many people were coming out of it saying they just wanted to give these characters a hug and that it made them feel, you know, so whimsical and all those things, which normally are not buzzwords for me specifically related to fantasy books. Cozy fantasy, not really my thing. I like a plot. I like mature elements in books and usually I like realistic books, which this is. This is a contemporary realistic adult book. I can say why people would say it's whimsical feeling, but I don't think it's fantasy. So if you have been holding out on this book because you also thought it was fantasy like I did, I'm here to tell you it's not and it's great. I loved the like competition element. I feel like that is one of the easiest ways to put a strong plot in a book because the main character has a very clear goal. She's trying to win this contest. And the games and riddles in here were so fun to follow along with. I enjoyed trying to figure things out with the main character. And of course, I also really liked the emotional elements that were included, the conversations about fostering and adopting, what makes a family. I did see a review um, by somebody saying this book was emotionally manipulative, which I think is to say that it goes really, really over the top with all of these characters and their past traumas. And it is kind of sad for the sake of being sad. But I would venture to ask, aren't all books emotionally manipulative. All fiction books, I guess I would say, like they're all made up stories to make you feel something. So just because this does that more, I don't necessarily see that as inherently a bad thing. I really loved it. It put a lot of things into perspective for me, made me thankful for a lot of things in my life because I do realize that a lot of the things covered in here are real life situations for a lot of people. And this book makes me want to do more good when I can. So I loved that. Um, I did also really like the island that this was set on. There is a map at the beginning of the book, which I showed in a former clip. It's really cool. It's modeled after a clock. It made me think about the second Hunger Games movie because I haven't read the books. And I personally would totally be down to see a sequel to this book and just see more of this island explored because I think it's a really cool setting. It is whimsical feeling, but it's real. It's not a fantasy land. It's a real island. 
I mean, not in real, real life, but in this book, it's, it's real. So I think that is pretty cool. Not a lot of contemporary books with maps inside them. So again, I see the crossover. I see why fantasy lovers love this book, but I don't think it's fantasy and I loved it for what it was. So what a pleasant, pleasant surprise. Easy five stars, if that wasn't clear. This probably will end up on my favorites of the year list, which is crazy. And overall, what a successful reading vlog. I had two five-star books, which was pretty unexpected going into this. And then even the three-star book, I did not dislike it. So I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'd recommend this thriller to anyone who thinks legal thrillers, following lawyers, complex mystery, sounds up your alley. And then these two, obviously I would recommend to pretty much everyone. I think The Leftover Woman is more of an objective five stars. I just think it's a very, I guess, well-earned and well-told story. As I was reading it, I wasn't thinking like, I love this so much, but once I got to the end of it, I was impacted, obviously, as I told you. So it's a five star book. I don't think it will show up on my favorites. I don't think it's one I will like rave and rave about for years to come. Details of it are already starting to slip in my memory. So I loved it, I respect it, but The Wishing Game is definitely the winner of this video. I will be gushing about this book for years to come. I will be recommending this to a couple of my friends and people in general for the specific elements in this book that I loved and I think they will love as well. I'm sad that I waited so long, but I'm happy that I finally read it. Please let me know if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts were. If you agree with me or you have a different opinion, I would love to talk about it. Or let me know if you have not read any of these books yet, but I convinced you to pick them up. If they're on your TBRs, I would love to know. And other than that, I don't think I have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in my next one.